Hi there! If you clicked on this video, you either have a fear of flying or you know someone that has a fear of flying. I wanted to mention that if you do have a fear of flying or you have a fear of anything, that how you feel is completely valid. No one should be telling you how to feel because it's how you feel. But don't let fear stop you from living your life. I wanted to walk you through a few tips that might help you the next time you need to fly. We're going to get through this together. You, me, and Mr. Squishy right here. I know a lot of these fear of flying videos are by flight attendants or pilots, and I'm not a flight attendant or a pilot, but in my line of work as a physical therapist, I often help other people manage their fears and anxieties when it comes to their body. Also, my information comes from my husband who is currently getting his PhD in performance psychology. All right, let's start with tip number one, which is identify the root of your fear. Most people have a fear of flying because of the turbulence or they're afraid of heights or they're afraid of the unknown not being in control or just to take off, or maybe they've had a bad experience or heard that someone else had a bad experience. When it comes to being afraid of anything, it can be really helpful to identify exactly what you're afraid of. From there, it will be easier to understand how to manage this fear. Once you know what you're afraid of, it will give you direction on how to research how you can help yourself, which brings me to my next tip, which is information is your friend. For me, the scariest things are just things that I don't understand. For a while, I actually had a fear of helicopters, and in order for me to help get over that fear of helicopters, I had to research as much as I can just to understand them. And I'm so happy that I did because I was able to take my first helicopter ride when we were in Kauai, and I don't regret anything. What tends to be scary is what's unknown, and that's why it's so important to do your research. Anxiety and fear is just our body's way of putting a GPS pin in something because it's trying to figure out how to respond in a given situation. This is normal and in a lot of ways it can protect you, but if you don't know where fear or anxiety is coming from, it can do a lot more harm than good. So that's why information is your friend and it's important to do your research. Equip yourself with knowledge and read up on how planes work, or take a look at all the tests that a plane has to go through in order to be approved to carry passengers, or research how airflow works, or thrust, drag, lift, gravity. Also, you can read up on the plane's built-in safety features, as well as like the noises that planes make and how it's completely normal. The more you learn, the more you understand, and the more your body can relax. Also, I wanted to commend you on doing your research on how to manage your fear of flying. Just by you clicking on this video, that deserves some recognition. Tip number three, separate fear from danger. So I wanted to give you an example. As a physical therapist, I often deal with a lot of patients who are afraid of the pain that they're experiencing. But not all pain is the same, and it's my job to educate them on which pains are good pains. So, stretching a stiff joint can be painful, just like the muscle burn that you feel when you're exercising can be painful. But that doesn't mean that these pains are bad pains. In fact, these are good pains. This is your body's natural response to say that you're doing something good for yourself. Pain does not always mean danger. Similarly, having a fear of flying doesn't always mean that something bad is going to happen. One way I like to think about how safe planes are and how safe flying is, is I like to take a look at the flight attendants and the pilots. Now, they wouldn't want to take this job if they weren't going to go home, right, because it's so dangerous. So they picked this as their career because they feel that it's safe and it's a job that they actually enjoy. A flight attendant can only fake a smile for so long if they're, for example, serving us drinks, right? So if it really was dangerous, I think the last thing the flight attendants would be doing is serving us drinks. But here they are, serving us drinks and catering to our needs. Also, flight attendants are awesome, so be sure to thank them the next time you see one. Tip number four, turbulence is normal. Now a lot of people have a fear of flying because of turbulence, and it makes sense because turbulence can be scary. But turbulence is completely normal and it is actually expected on a flight. Turbulence is basically when there's friction between the air and the land, so it's kind of like there's like speed bumps in the air. But a plane is designed to withstand turbulence. I like to think of it like this. I like to think of a car and a car having to drive on the road. Well, there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road, right? Sometimes there's cracks, sometimes there's potholes. It's just to be expected that there's bumps in the road. But the car is made to withstand those bumps. Same thing with the plane. It's going to be able to withstand the turbulence. Another thing that usually helps me whenever there's turbulence is I like to take a look at the flight attendants and take a look around me. And when you see people sleeping and eating and just chit-chatting away and just laughing, then you know that it is going to be safe. It's going to be okay. So turbulence is completely normal. Tip number five, techniques to try. 
So as a physical therapist, I often talk to my patients about fear. So fear, pain, and anxiety are so closely related. And one thing that can really help with all three of those is something called diaphragmatic breathing. So we're gonna do this together. So diaphragmatic breathing is when you are breathing all the way around your core, not just belly breathing forward and back, but you're gonna think of your body right here, like your low core, kind of like a balloon. So go ahead and put some fingers here in the front, put your thumb here in the back, right? And just give a nice lobster claw squeeze. So I'm gonna lobster claw squeeze right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna breathe in through all four quadrants. Breathe in, breathe out, right? Breathe in, breathe out. And you can also feel back here, right? Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, so that's what we call diaphragmatic breathing and it can be really helpful. Also, if you have some spine pain or some back pain, it can really help you balance your core. So give it a try. There are a couple other grounding techniques you may want to try the next time you're feeling anxious. There's the 5-4-3-2-1 rule and the 3-3-3 rule. The 5-4-3-2-1 rule is basically identifying five things that you can see, four things that you can touch, three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. Hopefully it's delicious. Then there's also the 3-3-3 rule, which is identifying three objects, three sounds, and moving three body parts. These two grounding techniques can help bring you back into the present moment when everything is just feeling overwhelming. Tip number six, pick a seat that makes you feel the most comfortable. So if you are able to get a flight that lets you pick your seat, then you're gonna to wanna to pick something that makes you comfortable. So if you like to see everything that's going on outside, then you're gonna to wanna to pick the window seat. But if you like to get up and stretch and move around, then you're gonna to wanna to take an aisle seat. But you know yourself best, so just do what feels right for you. But just remember, when that seatbelt sign is on, make sure you stay in your seat for the time being. Tip number seven, travel with a safe person if you can. Now, if you have the luxury to travel with someone that makes you feel really comfortable and they're just your safe person, then that is a complete luxury. So definitely jump on that. But it kind of also goes the other way. Don't be traveling, if possible, don't be traveling with other people that make you anxious or they're not that understanding because it kind of intensifies everything and it can make things worse. So if possible, travel with a safe person. Tip number eight, tell the flight attendant. 99% of all flight attendants I've ever encountered, which is a lot of flight attendants, have been completely awesome and super sweet to us. So kindness is contagious. So the nicer you are, it's just, it's contagious. So I encourage you to talk to the flight attendant if you do have a fear of flying and whenever they're not busy or they're not catering to someone else, just let them know that you do have a fear of flying because remember how I said that information is key? Well, they have a lot of information. In the middle of the flight, they'll be able to check up on you and make sure that you're okay and answer questions that you may have. So if possible, just tell a flight attendant because in the end, maybe you'll make a new friend. Also, a friendly reminder to us all, just make sure you're nice to the flight attendants. Tip number nine, educate your fellow seat members on how they can help you. Now, not everyone's gonna agree with this point, but if you do feel comfortable with it and your seat members look friendly enough, then go ahead and just tell them how they can help you. So most people want to help, they just don't know how. So if you can give them some direction on how they can help you, it may help you a lot and it's gonna give them an opportunity to be nice to someone for that day. But if you don't feel comfortable, that is completely fine. Tip number 10, visualization. Now I probably don't need to lecture on how important visualization is or how powerful it can be, but what I have my patients do is just visualize where they want to be. So whether it be playing with their grandkids or walking their daughter down the aisle, visualization can help refocus your attention and can be so helpful in so many different situations. So in this case, visualize some things that you're looking forward to doing once you land. Also, it's never a bad thing to reward yourself after you go through something hard. Tip number 11, talk to a professional. Now, if you feel like your fear of flying is really preventing you from living your life, then I highly recommend that you talk to a professional. It's different confiding in a close friend or a spouse versus talking to someone that's equipped with the tools necessary to help you. Tip number 12, 
Find a distraction that works for you. Now everyone is different, so what may work for someone else may not work for you. So if reading a book is not something that distracts you, then don't be reading a book. For me personally, I like to find something that I tend to get lost in. So what I'll do is I'll download some shows and movies before going on a plane just so I have something to do. So try to find something that you get lost in, whether it be coloring or maybe talking to someone or listening to a podcast. Just find a distraction that works for you. Tip number 13, don't drink too much caffeine. If possible, try to refrain from drinking too much caffeine before the flight or during your flight because caffeine can make you more alert. That's not always a bad thing, but if you do have some symptoms of anxiety, it can intensify those symptoms. If possible, I recommend trying a beverage that makes you more relaxed, something like chamomile tea. I got my chamomile tea here because it's raining outside. Tip number 14, get to the airport at a reasonable time. Now for me, I do like getting to the airport early because I like to relax when I'm there at my gate. Now when it comes to fear and anxiety around flying, you would think that getting to the airport extra, extra, extra early may be really helpful, but in the end, I want you to consider that maybe getting to the airport extra, extra, extra early may not be the most helpful. Now, if it does help you to get there early and be prepared, that is totally fine. But a lot of people that have a fear of flying, they don't wanna be sitting there in the gate area because it can intensify some of the feelings that they have. So I always think of it like the fear of public speaking, right? There's something called pre-performance anxiety. So it's the anxiety that you get before you perform. So right before you go up there, if you just have to sit there, then it's kind of miserable because you're like, oh my gosh, I wish there was something just to distract me. So this is what I recommend. If you are completely new to traveling and you don't know your way around the airport, or like in that country, then yes, get to the airport early, right? But if you are a very seasoned traveler, but you also just have a fear of flying, then just get to the airport at a reasonable time, right? Which is three hours before something international and two hours before a flight that's domestic. So you just wanna make sure you have enough time to get checked in, go through security and find your gate. But if it's gonna make you more anxious to be sitting there for hours, then I wouldn't recommend getting to the airport extremely early. Tip number 15, start small. When it comes to flying, maybe start with something short and something domestic and try to fly as often as you can for whatever makes sense for you. But eventually you can build up to longer flights and more international flights. So what is familiar to you can become so much less scary later on. Well, those are my 15 tips for those that have a fear of flying. You can do this, okay? Air hug for air travel. Also, if you're wanting to do more research on traveling, I'm gonna link my travel playlist right here.